Hi everyone. Well, it is now September 18, 2018. I want to show you um, what, sorry for the noise, I want to show you a video that was sent along to me, actually two videos that <laughs> were sent along to me by subscribers whom I want to thank for sending them along. This is drone footage of the New Bern area in North Carolina, the flooding. And this is a body of water, a lake, an inlet. Um, look at, can you see what looks like fanned out sections in this water? Like it gets dark here, dark here, dark here, dark here. It, it looks like extremely low frequencies are moving this water along. And I do want to show you even earlier on in this video. Now it doesn't look terribly windy. In fact, these lines on the sailboat are not moving at all. Even the slack one is not moving, but the water is. And there seems to be this one area that is producing a foam, but it almost looks like there's some kind of fence in that water. Remember, the Gwen Towers that are littered around the country emit extremely low frequencies. And those frequencies go through the ground. Right there, you can see very clearly that this water is not moving in a consistent manner, that this water is, there seem to be lines in this water that is causing it to move along. The extremely low frequencies I have shown in many, many videos they fan out, they're directional, and as they fan out, it's kind of like what I've shown on the National Mosaic, and let me bring that up. These are extremely low frequencies that they fan out. You can see the very defined lines that are clearly uh, fanning out and they are directional so they can they can send them in one direction or they can send them 300 miles a radius of 300 miles okay so I think that is what I am looking at in this video. And you can see all of the lines that seem quite defined in this water. Now, can they set off with extremely low frequencies that can make the water move? Yes. Can they set off frequencies strong enough to push the water right out of lakes and rivers and oceans? Yes, they can. And I think that's what we were looking at. Now, I want to show you another video that was sent to me 
by a subscriber. When we think about SPL, we think about loudness. Something more accurate to think about is a great change in pressure from high to low. The ripples in the water are actually those changes being seen visually. If we can... Sound frequencies, extremely low frequencies, that's what he is doing. Just with an ordinary, what are these, woofers or subwoofers in a stereo? Think in three dimensions and align these high and low pressure centers together, we can increase our SPL and clean up the sound waves for greater sound cue. Another observation we make here is that objects in the medium do interact or interfere with the sound waves. The water in this experiment is depicting what the air is actually doing in your car or in your enclosure when it's playing sound. This also shows us why the sound is different in different locations in our vehicles and how we can see changes when moving subboxes to different positions. We might also want to try different frequencies when we do this as the interference patterns would change. So based on all of this, my little tip to increase your sound quality or SPL without having to add tons of power or changing the equipment is to simply change the orientation or layout of your subbox. Now this woofer uses a full cone poly cap so it does resist moisture. We're going to start with some low frequency around 22-23 Hz and just observe how the water reacts. We'll start with low power and slowly increase until we can break the surface tension of the water. Again, just observe. Now let's observe how it reacts with a higher frequency, around 50 Hz. And again, slowly increasing the intensity. Now do you see these lines? Those were the lines that we saw in this drone video posted by, uh, what is it, USA Today? These lines right here. Let me just let you watch just a few more seconds. Now, Edwin, our assistant, will add a bit more water to further the experiment. We've sealed around the edge with duct tape, and we're going to add this object to... It's not playing with our experimental object. As the sound waves pass through the water, we observe this odd rippling effect. It's not like the standard symmetrical ripples we've come accustomed to with water more like a bubbling. And you see it's, well, if you have what the causes waves, it. If, that, if you have the frequencies that are emitted in a radius, you literally have a very defined um, circle that is being affected. But if you have the frequencies that are not emitted in a radius, you may get an effect like this. In other words, the extremely low frequencies that go through the ground, they can direct them and they can emit them, emit them in certain directions.
So I want to thank both of those subscribers who sent along these videos. They noticing what was happening in this water right here. Here's another video of what sound can do to water. So, frequencies can be used for good or they can be used by evil people to destroy an awful lot. They can destroy by flooding. They can create the tornadoes that we have seen uh, in North Carolina as well as Virginia. Virginia, the last comment I got, they had 13 tornadoes go off yesterday. But they can also create flash flooding and flash flood warning for northern Rhode Island could get three inches per hour. Northern Massachusetts, northern Rhode Island. You're looking at the quote-unquote remnants of Hurricane Florence creating flash flooding in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and uh, if one would just do the research, well, yeah, they do have the technology to create these flash floods and tell everybody it's the remnants of a hurricane. But I also want to bring your attention to this article. Three television stations running out of gas to power generators in Wilmington. So I also want to thank the subscriber for linking below or telling me about these television stations running out of gas. What does that mean? That they will go black. And if it's more than three television stations, if it's all, they're running out of gas to fuel their generators, we will get no news from what is taking place in Wilmington, North Carolina. It will go dark. So let's hope that other news uh, outlets have the gas for generators or will they be told to just say they don't have any more fuel for their generators and everything goes black that that's that is a really scary scenario and I also want to thank my subscriber who sent along this flash flood warning okay well I hope everybody is okay and um, just wanted to share the information that was shared with me and thank you for sharing it. All links are below.